Recently, people have been talking about Windows 11 performance being horrible on AMD Ryzen CPUs, and recently, AMD released a fix for it. So, does this fix work, and does it get you those extra frames per second? Let's find out. Today's video is brought to you by Corsair. If you're looking for an aluminium framed 10 keyless keyboard with hyper processing technology and Cherry MX speed switches, as well as a detachable USB-C cable, then this keyboard is going to be the best for gamers. Links in description below to find out more. Welcome back to Tech Yes City and today's test system was the 5950X the Ryzen 9 and also 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. And what we did was we decided to leave this on out of the box settings for the Ryzen CPU, since I think the majority of people buying Ryzen would probably just run the out of the box settings rather than manually overclocking. And I think this was one of the problems before we get into the results in that Windows 11 was not working properly with the independent core clock speeds. And so AMD released this update to address these problems. And so what we'll pull up here is the first game where we tested at 1080p with Horizon Zero Dawn. And this just showed a massive difference before and after. I was actually shocked at how poorly this game was running on Ryzen before this patch. And then afterwards, we can see we're getting over double the FPS on this title. It was just really shocking to see how much of a difference this was making and also how much Windows 11 was hampering performance on the AMD Ryzen systems. There was also another problem that Windows 11 was introducing for users, which is why on this first benchmark, we included core isolation results as well. So if you guys didn't know, core isolation is a setting that will independently run the applications in its own virtual machine, which of course can tank performance if you have this setting on. So I do recommend turning this off if you're gaming on a single machine, but here's where we didn't see a whole lot of a difference in FPS. And we did test this with a 3070 Ti, but we were CPU bound since we were using the lower settings at 1080p. However, moving over to CSGO, this showed another big jump up in performance going from 408 average FPS all the way up to 455 after we applied this patch. And then going over to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, this was at 1080p high settings. We went from 135 FPS and then we went up to 145. So we did get a gain out of this title, just like the last title we're pulling up here, F1 2020. We went from 308 average FPS up to 317. As for the 1% lows, they were better all across the board after this patch update. So what these results mean is that basically if you've got an AMD system and you want to go over to Windows 11, then I would highly recommend applying this patch as soon as possible, especially since some titles will hamper performance just massively as we saw in the case of Horizon Zero Dawn. But you may notice that I also included the Windows 10 results and what we can see here is that after we've applied this patch on the Ryzen system, it will run pretty much similar to Windows 10. And a lot of people are refusing to update to Windows 11 due to all the problems that are associated with this new OS. And also I have to say in relation to Windows 11 is that Microsoft definitely should have tested it out more and fixed a lot of these problems, especially before making it a final release, a retail release, of this OS because a lot of people are on Windows 10 and they just refuse to upgrade to Windows 11 due to issues like this. And the biggest problem I have here is that this fix came from AMD on their website themselves. It didn't come through a Windows update, even though Windows did release their own update recently that helped fix up some of the problems that were occurring. And one of those was uh, turning off the core isolation by default rather than having that on and causing performance issues. Though another issue that relates to Windows 11, of course, is those TPM 2.0 settings. A lot of systems just won't have this natively to install Windows 11 officially. But in the past, we have done a tutorial on how you can get around this, especially with the insider builds and the earlier versions. You don't have to have that TPM setting enabled just by simply downloading a Windows 10 USB installer, and then changing that file 
to the Windows 10 one and replacing that. And then you're essentially installing Windows 11 through a Windows 10 installer. And that's one way to get around it. And that's how I've actually installed Windows 11 on all the systems that I'm using here. But me personally, so far, Windows 11 has been, I feel like it's a bit of an update in terms of aesthetics, but in terms of functionality, I feel like it's still a downgrade versus Windows 10. So hopefully Microsoft does fix these things and doesn't sort of pass the buck on, especially like we saw here, pass the buck on to AMD to fix the problem as opposed to it being a Windows 11 problem. But lastly, if you're sitting on the fence on whether you should upgrade to Windows 11 from Windows 10, I would just ask the question of, do you need to? I would say if you're a gamer, I would personally hold back at this point in time just until they polish everything up because this time around with Windows 11, it's looking exactly like what Microsoft did with Windows 8 in that they released this OS, it was buggy and things didn't work as well as the previous OS, which in that time was Windows 7. And so people were just reluctant to upgrade to Windows 8. But then when Windows 10 came out, it was like, wow, this works amazing from the get go. And pretty much everyone adopted Windows 10 with a big smile on their face. So I think in about six months, this OS will be properly polished. But in the meantime, you will hear about a lot of issues and bugs, just like this one right here. But with that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. Also, let us know in the comments section below, what are your experiences thus far with Windows 10 versus Windows 11? Have you upgraded or are you reluctant to upgrade? Love reading those thoughts and opinions as always. Just like this question of the day, which comes from Brian Millington. And they ask, if I install Windows 11 on a compatible system, then put the SSD in a non-compatible PC, will it boot? So if you do the official uh, TPM 2.0 install on one machine and then try to take that SSD to another machine, it unfortunately won't work. I also found if you do do the official TPM 2.0 install, then what can happen is even if you change settings in your BIOS and then try to boot Windows 11 again, it can just brick the install. So it's pretty much a one trick pony in that once you get it installed in a certain way, that you have to keep it in that configuration. So that's the unfortunate news there. But as it stands for me personally, I am doing the non-TPM install method at this point in time, and I've had no issues whatsoever with Windows 11. So I hope that answers that question. And if you guys have stayed this far and you're enjoying that Tech yes content, you should hit that sub button, ring that bell, to get the content as soon as it drops, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.